Max, do you have kids? I do. Okay. So with kids, I got a 12-year-old, 10-year-old, 8-year-old, uh, and a 3-year-old. Anybody have kids? Raise your hand if you got kids. A bunch of people here has got kids. So how do you not only have the conversation with your kids about AI, but also career planning, positioning, where traditionally you're like, hey, son, you're going to grow up to be a this. How do you manage career planning with them at a young age, knowing what direction AI is going? I just said to you, what do you do with, you know, your two-year, three-year, five-year, ten-year plan with AI? You said, here's what you don't do. No ten-year plans, right? <laughs> you said go to, what, 12 to 24 months. So yeah. imagine... 12 year old, what's it gonna happen in six years? So yeah. how do you manage that with career planning and kids? Yeah, you know, I, I have a little guy who's just gonna be two years old in December here, and, and I, it's, it's tough, it really keeps me awake at night thinking about this. I, I think um, one obvious message is um, they ha you have to be nimble to live in the future and prosper. The idea that you spend 20 years studying stuff and then some career and then you do that for 40 years, forget about it. That's so over. You need to be nimble and um, second, and have the idea that you're going to constantly be innovating, learning new things and going where, where it makes sense to go. The second thing is whatever field you're in or your children are going, are in, are going into, even if it seems like it has nothing to do with AI, it's crucial that they're up to speed on how AI is influencing and will influence that industry, right? Because what's going to happen then is not that your kid is going to be replaced by an AI, but rather, rather people get, who don't use AI get replaced by people who do. And you want your kids to be in the second category, the ones who are the early adopters, who become more productive not the ones who are in denial and just get replaced. How soon do you introduce them to, uh, to them? To oh, stuff? there is no too soon. You know, the, it's, um, I mean, okay, little Leo, you know, we keep him away from screens altogether, but, and you know, if you, if you have someone, I mean, a a any kids in school these days, they're always using ChatGPT, even if you think they're not. So <laughs> no need to skip the introductions. It, but it's really important to get, get kids thinking about how, how they can make the technology work for them, not against them. And, 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 and both in the workplace, actually, and in their private lives also. It makes me really, really sad when I walk around a beautiful place like this and, and see all these good-looking teenagers around the table and they're not looking at each other. They're staring into little rectangles like the zombie apocalypse came or something like that, right? And so this isn't just business. This is also about our personal lives. How can we make sure that we control our technology rather than our control, technology controlling us? Coming back to this idea, we are team human. Let's figure out how we can make technology that brings out the best in us. So, so we can let our humanity flourish rather than trying to turn ourselves into robots and compete in a losing race against, uh, against uh, machines like John Henry against the steam engine. And since we're out of time, can I just end on a positive note? Please. Since you said that yes. you're, a, you're a doomer, a gloomer. I want to remind us all about something incredibly inspiring and positive about all this. You know, our planet has been around for 4.5 billion years and our species has been around for hundreds of thousands of years. And for most of this time, we were incredibly disempowered, like a leaf blowing around on a stormy September day, you know, with very little agency. Oops, we starved to death because our crops failed. Oh, we died of some disease because we haven't invented antibiotics, you know. And what's happened is that technology and science have empowered us. We started using these brains of ours to figure out so much about how the world works that we can make technology to become the captains of our own ship. And we've doubled our life expectancy even more, and every single reason for why today is better than the Stone Age is because of the technology. And if we do this right with, with AI, 
and use artificial intelligence to amplify our intelligence, to bring out the best in humanity, humanity can flourish, not just for the next election cycle, but for billions of years, not just on this planet, but if you are really bold, even out in much of our gorgeous uh, universe out there, we don't have to be limited anymore by the intelligence that could fit through mommy's birth canal. It's an incredibly in inspiring and empowering future that is open for us. If we don't squander it all by doing something reckless and dumb. And this is what I want to leave you with here. You know, we want to make sure to keep AI safe, keep it under human control, not because we're a bunch of worry warts, but because we are optimistic. We have a dream for a great future. Let's build it. For the last four years, every time we do podcasts, I have to ask Rob or somebody, hey, can you pull up the snooze? Can you pull up that? Can, which way do these guys lean? Can you go back to the timeline of, eventually after asking so many questions, I said, why don't we design the website that we want aggregated? We don't write the articles. We feed all of it in using AI. So nine months ago, eight months ago, I hired 15 machine learning uh, engineers. They put together our new site called vtnews.ai. What this allows you to do when you go to it, if, look, if you go to that story right there that says Trump proposes overtime pay, click on it, it'll tell you how many sources are reporting on this from the left. If you go to the right, Rob, it says left sources, click on it. Those are all the left sources. If I want to go to right sources, those are the stuff. If I want to go to center, I go there. Now, if I want to go all the way to the top and I want to find out a lopsided story, a story that only one side is reporting on, either the left or the right. So if you notice the first one, uh, we'll say Zelensky announces release of 49 Ukrainians from Russia. Notice more people on the left are reporting on that than the right. If I go to the middle one, same thing. If I go to the right one, same thing. You can see what stories are lopsided. And if I pick one of the stories, pick the first story, uh, uh, click on a Trump one proposes overtime tax cuts. To the right on the AI, I can ask any question I want, but click on the first question that has it. It says, what is the political context and potential motivation behind the tax Trump's new tax cut uh, proposal, click on the question mark. It explains exactly what the motives are. So for you to use, whether you're doing a podcast, you're in the middle of a podcast, or you just want to know it for yourself, you're busy like myself. And last but not least, this is all AI doing this. I'm machine learning engineers. Go all the way to the top. I can go to timelines, go to timelines, and see how far back a story goes. Pick the Israel-Palestinian conflict. If I want to go to that and go back and see why are some those two days a big spike, I'll have Rob pull it over to go to those two days with a big spike, and I'll see exactly what happened on that day or the previous day, and many other features vtnews.ai has. So simply go to vtnews.ai. There's a freemium model, there's a premium, and then there's the insider. If you want to have unlimited access to the AI, click on the VTAI Insider. You can now become a member effectively today. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.